Combat drones, one of the most important weapons in EVE Online. There are, I counted, 93 types of combat drones in EVE and several other drone types for utility other than pure combat. Basically a combat drone is an automated small attack craft, not to be confused with an actual fighter, which are a class of their own and only used by carrier capital ships. Like most things in EVE, it's hard to fully grasp what drones do at a glance. The art of drone gameplay is a rich and complex system. All four of the major Empire factions in EVE have their own flavor of drones with different weapon types and speeds. And these are further subdivided by size class, which are light, medium, heavy, and sentry. Also, there are E-War drones, which do not inflict damage, but do other annoying things such as jam sensors. I have called drones the most versatile weapon system in EVE because of their variety and different ways they can be applied. Drones are usually considered a secondary weapon to something like turrets or missile launchers on most ships, but some ships use drones as their primary weapon systems, such as the Gila, Ishtar, Myrmidon, or Tristan. Their advantages are many, such as not taxing your ship's capacitor, or having to worry about the tracking and transversal of your ship's weapons as much, and the ability to inflict damage over long range. The only real disadvantage to using drones is that they can be attacked and destroyed. First of all, only subscribed Omega accounts have access to Tech 2 drones, and Tech 2 drones become by far more effective than Tech 1 drones, especially in damage, the more drone skills your character has trained. Alpha players with free-to-play accounts or those not skilled for Tech 2 drones can instead buy faction or augmented drones, which are almost as effective as Tech 2 drones, but they're much more expensive. Let's start with the four major racial classes of drones. Amar, Mimitar, Galente, and Calderi. Pirate factions do not normally make drones of their own. The only combat drones that fall outside of these four racial classifications are the powerful geckos. Each racial type of drone specializes in inflicting different damage types because of the weapons they use. The Galente Federation's drones have the most firepower, inflict thermal damage, but have the slowest flight speed relative to other drones. The Caldera State's drones inflict kinetic damage. The Amar Empire's drones use energy weapons that inflict EM damage. The Mimitar Republic's drones inflict explosive damage and are also the fastest drones relative to other empires. This can matter when selecting the damage type to inflict upon your target. Some targets have poor resistance to a particular damage type. For example, shields are generally more vulnerable to EM damage types. When going against an opponent that has a lot of shield tank, it may be wise to use Amar drones such as Acolytes that do EM damage. Certain NPC types, such as Serpentis, may have certain resistance weaknesses or resist holes. For example, for Serpentis it's thermal damage, therefore you can use a Galente drone such as Hobgoblins against them. Also, each ship in EVE has a particular resist value in their shields, armor, and hull tank. Knowing every popular ship's damage resists is a daunting task, but can give you an edge. In a PvP setting, selecting your drone loadout takes some experience, as most competent PvP players that are actually looking for a fight will plug whatever resist hole their ships have. But players who are not doing PvP and do not plug their ship's resist hole can be exploited in this way. For example, a Kaldari MOA class cruiser normally uses shields as its primary defense, since it can fit more shield buffing modules in the mid slots than most cruisers, but its base EM resistance for shields is 0%. Unless this is an experienced player who has plugged this resist hole, Amar drones that do EM damage will knock down those shields the most. And now for size classifications, light, medium, heavy, and sentry. Light drones such as Galenti Hobgoblins, Mimitar Warriors, or Amar Acolytes are the bread and butter secondary weapon for any ship with a drone bay even mining barges. They are fast, and so small you can carry a lot of them. They are especially useful against small and fast targets, especially for battleships with large weapons that have trouble tracking fast targets. Hopgoblins do the most damage, and are the most popular light combat drones. In a PvP situation, light drone selection varies. Mimitar warriors are sometimes the only drones that can inflict damage on extremely fast ships, such as interceptors or other frigates. 
as many actually outrun even light combat drones. Medium drones are usually the domain of cruisers and battle cruisers. Just like with light drones, the Galenti drones, the Hammerheads, do the most damage. Medium drones are usually best used against ships that cruiser size are larger, and they may have trouble catching up with a lot of fast frigates to apply their damage. Heavy drones, such as Galenti Ogres, inflict a lot of damage, and are the most tough. The problem with heavy drones is that they have a slow flight time. It takes them a while to fly over to the target, and also to return to your drone bay. This means that if the fight does not go well, you may have to leave these drones behind rather than risk losing your ship. Minmatar Berserker heavy drones are exceptionally fast for heavy drones, and can even catch most destroyers with ease. Geckos are a rare, expensive heavy drone, but they inflict all damage types, making them the most feared and treasured drones in the game. And now the oddballs of drones, sentry drones. Sentry drones can barely move at all. They are large and take up a lot of space in the drone bay, but their weapons are powerful with excellent range. For example, the Kaldari Warden's base optimal range is within 60 kilometers, but with the right skills and modules, that range can be projected out much, much further. These are basically heavy turrets that can be deployed into space. They can sit at a safe range and comfortably snipe targets to devastating effect. They have two weaknesses, however. One is poor tracking ability, so targets that are maneuvering closely, especially small ones, are hard for sentry drones to hit. The other weakness is that they are mostly stationary. Wherever you drop them is where they will stay. You will have to be on top of them to recall them back to the drone bay. This limits your ship's maneuvering options unless you are willing to leave them wherever they are dropped and risk losing them. Now onto another category of drone, E-War drones. E-War drones are not as fast as pure combat drones, but they certainly can give you an edge, especially in PvP. One of the most popular E-War drones is the ECM drone, such as the Hornet EC300, which has a chance of completely jamming a ship's targeting ability. These are a great defensive weapon, since if you cannot be targeted, you can escape warp disruption attempts by an attacker. Another drone that some pilots use are webbing drones, like the Warrior SW300, which are also somewhat slow, but they can slow down other ships with stasis webifiers. Some pilots find them useless, but there is some debate on their usefulness. Most other E-War drones are not used as much, but can do things such as disrupt turret tracking, target paint, sensor damp, etc. There are certainly some players that will devise creative ways to use even these rarely used E-War drones. Here's a few other tips about drones. When managing drones, it's very useful to set up drone folders on your drone panel. These folders can be named something like Hobgoblin, or Heavy, or Flight 1, since flights of drones can be a combination of any size and type. You can simply drag the entire folder from the drone panel into space to launch the drones, rather than fumbling through the management menus. Also F is the hotkey to make your drones fight. I often double tap F just to be sure. Shift R is the key combination to recall the drones. Very fast and very useful because if you leave the grid before recalling your drones, they will not follow you into warp and will disconnect to an abandoned state, and they are free to salvage for anyone to pick up. You can go back to where the drones were lost and reconnect to the abandoned drones, and you can set up your own hotkey for this, or you can right click your capacitor and find the option to reconnect to drones. Another tip is to expand your drone management panel so that you can see what your drones are doing. Sometimes you forgot to give them the order to attack, or the order did not take for whatever reason, you'll need to watch their status. Enemies may also begin to attack the drones. If this happens, you may want to recall all the drones and then redeploy them. This will force the opponent to retarget them. And finally, sometimes drones will inexplicably stop attacking and go idle. This happens most when the target has outrun the drones you may have to repeat the fight order with the F key. Drones are most vulnerable to those who can use a stasis webifier and a warp scrambler to both slow them down and shut off their onboard micro warp drive, then attack with fast tracking weapons. This includes other drones, so keep this in mind if you want to destroy them. Drones are also very vulnerable to smart bombs, which cause damage in an area of effect around the ship that uses them. This means drones caught in this area of effect can be damaged or destroyed easily as drones typically swarm a target at close range. 
That's all I have to say about combat drones. There are several other drone types, such as mining drones, salvage drones, and repair drones. By the way, our corp is active again in-game. If you're interested in a very casual, small gang PvP corp, then contact Maximilian Bonaparte in-game, or search for the chat room called Booty Tiki Bar, if interested in possibly joining Interstellar Booty Hunters. We're only taking a mega level subscribed accounts, and you will need to self-entertain as we are a small corp of tight-knit friends. No guarantees you'll get in, but you might as well inquire. So that's it for this video, Space Friends. Be sure to subscribe and like, and try to watch as many of my videos as you possibly can. Until next time.